Happy New Year, girlfriends, and welcome to day two of our inaugural V1 Sports Virtual Summit. Thank you to those that joined us yesterday. We had an incredible lineup of guest speakers, including Ryan Mogg, Mike Bender, Jake Thurm, and Mr. Short Game, a YouTube sensation with over 170,000 followers. We got to see Mr. Short Game's home golf studio yesterday. Today, we're going to get to see a golf academy, so a little bit of a different um, view. If you missed those seminars, they will be available on our YouTube channel in the next couple of days. The link to our YouTube channel is going to show up right over there in the chat screen because my girls are so amazing at helping me put great links in that chat along the way. We are more than halfway through our second day and we still have some great seminars this evening. Doc Suddy with the legend Gary Palace and Cheryl Anderson from the Mike Bender Academy. To see the full lineup, check out the link over there. You can still register for those uh, before they start. If you missed the seminar, uh, they'll be available on YouTube, I already said that. We are offering PGA, MSR, and LPGA CU credits to all coaches attending. If you forgot to register with your PGA or LPGA number, just email my girl Kelly at marketing at v1sports.com and she will take care of submitting your member number for credits. Uh, to all the folks that are joining us today, we absolutely love keeping this casual and sort of ham and egging and answering your questions. So please put them in the chat window. We will do our best to get to all of them throughout the next hour. I am Mandy Von C, Southeast Regional Sales Manager for V1 Sports based in Charleston, South Carolina. V1 Sports is a 25-year-old company and the leader in delivering video analysis and instruction solutions to golfers and golf instructors around the world. In addition to our software solutions, we provide hardware solutions, including high-speed cameras and computers and the V1 pressure map. Uh, our pressure mat integrates seamlessly with the V1 Pro desktop and mobile applications to provide immediate data and video feedback. You guys, if you know me, you know that I totally love my job and we have a lot of fun every day. Certainly, we owe all of this fun to Mr. Gary Palace. He's over there on my screen. He is one of the reasons I'm actually sitting here today. I don't know if you know that, Gary, but um, you are certainly one of the reasons I called V1 uh, a year ago and asked to please join the team. Gary is the vice president and class clown at V1 Sports. Gary has been with V1 from the very beginning in 1995. He started our company back then. I'd say that Gary is an expert on video analysis, building golf academies, supporting every instructor and golfer on the planet and keeping smiles on the faces of every member of our team and community. Uh, if every golfer in the world knows Mike Bender or Dana Dockwest, then every golf instructor in the world knows Gary Palace. Gary, thank you for being here for me. I hope that that introduction does you justice. Thank you, Miss Mandy. You're you're way too kind, and welcome everybody. And thank you very much. We uh, love doing this and the sharing of information. We look forward to it. Awesome. So our guest speaker that's joining uh, GP and I is Craig Trahan. He is the director of instruction at the Denton Country Club, just north of Dallas, Texas, where I spent a few days last week. Craig has recently earned a master certification with the PGA, and I'm really excited. Uh, Craig and I are our buddies and he texted me last night because just last night he found out that he has earned the best young teacher award from golf digest congratulations craig and welcome to our virtual summit thank you for being here my pleasure awesome um so let's see yesterday during one of my seminars um i got to co-host with our ceo brian finnerty and we uh we said this v1 sports has a whole bunch of friends and we like to make customers and clients along the way Craig and I are certainly buddies and I'm really excited to spend an hour sharing with all the good people how we got here. Um, it's been a long process, uh, but you and I recently worked together on a huge project um, and I'm really excited to show it off today. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start by showing, doing a little screen share. Um, I usually start at the beginning, but I sort of wanna start this time at the end. So let me just get my, video pulled up really quickly. Um, this is the final product of our golf academy. Okay. 
So that was just Friday, this past Friday. I had to show that to start. Um, but even further back, Craig, I like to start off by letting the folks know a little bit about you. You've certainly had some big accomplishments this year. But can you share with the good people, before we start talking about that beautiful academy, where you started your golf career and how did you get to Denton? You know, 15 years ago, I, I walked into New Orleans Country Club and I asked to uh, be an assistant professional there. I spent four years at New Orleans, then moved on to Houston Country Club uh, under Gordon Johnson. I left there after a year and a half, knowing that I wanted to pursue to be one of the best teachers in America. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've done that. I opened up a um, Rob Noel and I top 100 teacher uh, in Mandeville, Louisiana, opened up a uh, 6,000 square foot indoor golf facility because we believe we could uh, grow the game of golf at the grassroots level. Um, I did that with him and uh, for seven years. And when that, when that time had passed, I, I moved on to Denton Country Club. And I knew I wanted to break the mold here, become the first director of instruction in the club's uh, history. They're almost 100 years old here. And um, then I wanted to break the mold again and bring a teaching facility to this, this country club. That's when I reached out to V1 Sports, uh, planning the process and uh, really wanted the, the best possible experience for the member and the student. Um, and, and that's kind of a, a little short about my journey over the last 15 years. Um, I've always tried to keep learning. Um, somebody that really inspired me always said, uh, if you dare to teach, uh, never cease to learn. So that's always been a big motto and uh, it's been a great journey so far. Awesome. We certainly, uh, continuing education is definitely uh, you're definitely a good example of that. Who's your mentor? You know, I've had a lot of a lot of people guide me along the way. In South Louisiana, we, we've got some great professionals. Rob Noel, James Lights, uh, in Mississippi, BJ Trollio. Um, there's a guy in, 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 in that works with and, and under um, Mark Blackburn named Lane Savoy. So there's a lot of a lot of professionals at the, at the top of their game that I lean on. And I, I think we all stand on the shoulders of people who came before us. So um, it's, it's just great having a team and a network where you can pick up that phone and ask a question and uh, just keep learning. Awesome. So uh, back in February is when we started talking about this. Why'd you call me? Why'd you call V1 Sports? I called V1 Sports simply just what you said in your introduction. You're absolutely the best. Um, you've been easy to work with. You've got the best hardware and software. Um, every step of the way from planning to prep to installation has been flawless. And that's really sincerely from my heart. And I can't thank V1 enough. I love my pressure mat. Um, it's really changed the game for my students. I, I like to work on, on our base of support. And, and I, I love working on, on foot, great footwork. And to see that I've been here for two years without that pressure plate and putting these students on the pressure plate and seeing the results we're getting and, and, and showing the student and having direct feedback with that has been incredible. So I thank V1. Thank you for that. So we, it took us a minute to get it approved. Okay, so all the people that are watching, there's a whole bunch of people that have tuned in. Um, let's talk about the speed bumps. So you know, we wanted to go put a gorgeous academy together. Gary and I love planning these. Um, we do it, we try to do it within budget, but what are the speed bumps and how did we get through it? I'm expecting you to say, you know, a budget approval from the board, member buy-in. How, yeah, how, I mean, how can we help navigate that? It, it's funny because I've built two golf academies and both had a budget of $100,000. One had an existing structure and one had nothing. We were, we were just at Denton Country Club, we had a spot on the right side of the range. And, you know, I think convincing people that um, this is going to help grow the membership and grow the game of golf, uh, getting that budget approved. I um, mean, going from there, we started with a metal building. I think I, I made the bays professionally probably the, the smallest you'd want them, 20 by 25. I called a lot of golf professionals and they said, just don't really bend on that. So I kept, I stuck to my guns there and obviously uh, convincing the board. I mean, going through the process of just working hard every day. And sometimes I didn't get the answer I wanted, but I knew I had faith and I knew if I worked hard that people would see that. And that's what happened. Awesome. Thank you for, uh, for sticking with it. We certainly loved uh, putting it together. Okay. So when I finally got the good news that the budget was approved, the first thing that I always do when I get the go ahead from anybody um, that they're putting high speed cameras specifically in, 
I loop in my installation mentor, the legend and our V1 Sports VP, Uncle Gary Palace. Um, Gary and I like to get as many people as we can involved. And I'm talking about the pros, which would be Craig, the electricians, the general contractors, the architects, the club owner, the general manager, even students on a call to talk about everything from cameras to lighting to turf to electrical. Gary, um, can you talk to the, the good folks about all your history with doing this and the things that are important to do before you get too far into a project? Yeah, thank you very much, Mandy. And thank you, Craig, and some very good comments. And so I think the key point is when we start out with a new customer, I mean, we go down, and I won't go into a lot of detail because we have limited time, but we look at some of the more pertinent thing is number one, are we working with an existing facility and we're gonna retrofit, are we starting from scratch? From there, if you're working with an existing facility, certain things are dictated, but we look at things like when Mandy was doing, doing the tour, I would go to Craig and Mandy would go to Craig and do you wanna hit indoors? and outdoors? Well, that answer dictates a lot by itself. If you want both, we need a garage door. If you need a garage door, you need a net. And then from there, you start working through the, you know, the dimensions, 20 by 25, turf, lighting, things like that, camera positioning. So I think a lot of things you saw in that 30 second little um, video tour that Mandy did showed you things like slide rails, in Craig's situation, what we saw in his academy, he's got a very, very tall ceiling. So that comes into, gee, is that going to require different lights? Do we have to hang them lower? Do we hang more of them? What it really comes into is the size of the net. Nets aren't cheap. Nets are very expensive. And, you know, then you got to hang the net. And how do you open the net? So all of it is in, you know, at home, when I open my garage door, the door goes like this and it covers the car. Well, you can't do that if you're hanging a net, so it has to roll up on itself. Some of these appear to be common sense, but we brainstorm with the customer. We don't walk in, Mandy and I, or whoever else from V1 and go, this is how you need to do it. Craig, how do you want to teach? How many bays? How many cameras? And let's kind of fill in the blanks from there, and then we get the other people involved, and then we really get into the positioning of the, right down to where you turn the lights on. And, and it's really it's really a fun thing to do. The best thing is to what both Craig and Mandy said, do it first, not later. And that that's really critical. Mandy and I have done a few installations that I won't go into that because we're friends now, but um, we've struggled a little bit working with existing facilities. That's one of the hardest things you can do. In this case here, from what I've seen and working with Craig and his group was really, really a fun thing to do. And, and one more little comment is that Good, we're done, Craig. Good luck and go teach. Nah, we're not done. We are ongoing support. Craig is going to have questions. Things will happen. That's part of the power of V1. That's part of our 25-year history of continuing on. It's not catch you later. We're here. And, and again, Craig will be calling us just for support questions, best practices, other things like that. Again, because he sold us to grow his business. That's what it's all about. Um, and by the way, we, we cannot emphasize enough to do this ahead of time, because if you put a garage door in and you really need a roller door, that's real expensive to change on the end. It's yes. also real expensive to yank lights out and rewire things. So Gary and I would rather talk to you about that before you get mad at us early in the process versus late. Um, so I am a salesperson for V1. I, I, my dad's a woodworker. I kind of grew up in a workshop. I've been really lucky to have the opportunity to do multiple installations with uh, Gary, and I'm really grateful for everything that I've learned um, and for the level one installation certification that I earned. But Gary, it's weird, I haven't received that in the mail yet, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, I'm not grateful for the fact that you almost let me fall out the ceiling at the Atlanta Athletic Club, um, but that's okay because I'm still here and that lesson that was going on, I didn't totally fall into the golfer. But anyway, I did a, I did a time lapse during my installation at Denton. And uh, I'd like to show it. This is a fun video. So this is me building, I call it building the uh, computer. Hang on a second, let me get this. So this is us. This is me and the general contractor. I don't think Craig's in this one. I think I sent him off to teach while we were doing this. But here is the time lapse of a V1 system going in. 
This is about a three hour process. There's no audio here, um, obviously, because it's a time lapse, but all that cabling was uh, pre planned with Gary and I. I had everything sort of hanging out of the walls. We rewired or we wired their uh, TVs on the wall. And that's the cameras, the desktop computer, the hit detector, the voice mic, and the body track pressure mat. And uh, a lot of technical stuff goes into building that computer to make sure it's optimized for Craig's um, teaching business. Okay, so that's our little time share, our time lapse. I thought, I thought that would be a fun thing to share. And let me get back to my, okay. Um, we have some pics of the install and I'd like for Anna to share those. I wanna specifically talk about um, a few of these. We have a question about the camera. Anna, can you pull up those pictures? Um, the camera is this. So we'll see some pictures in a second, but the camera is the best value or best, best camera you can get for high speed video. This is actually the camera and the lens. It's tiny. Um, we have this, if you want information on pricing for this, you can email sales at v1sports.com. Um, and Anna, you can just click through these kind of slowly. I want to talk a little bit about this academy. Gary and Craig, please jump in um, as we look at these pictures. So on the left, you're looking at the lefty face on camera. Um, you're also seeing the pressure mat in this picture. Um, the frames per second on the camera are 240. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, that wall monitor, we planned ahead of time with the electrician to uh, wire that. So actually the wires go up into the ceiling or up behind that wall into the ceiling and over across. Um, we plan the lengths of the cables well in advance and we send those well in advance so that we have those in the hands of the electrician before sheetrock goes in. Um, a really cool thing that Gary has designed um, brand new is that slide track. That slide track is mounted on a wall. And of course the cable comes out of the wall, but it's really slick, really easy to install and really easy for Craig to adjust the cameras. How do you, enter, could I raise Yes, my please. Hand? So part of what, and as Mandy's going through this, cosmetic is key. Notice Craig has got very simple walls. We don't have glossy paint. We have a flat thing, but is cosmetic just pretty and neat? It's also practical. Practical being that we avoid people tripping on cables, tripods. I mean, the more we can protect the cable, we protect the camera. The camera's a great camera and we do wanna protect it. So part of cosmetic is, is that it looks good. And after a while, I, I hate to say this, Craig, if we could send a picture in six months, you're probably gonna have golf bags and pictures everywhere. We try to avoid that, but, but honestly, it, it's as practical as much as it is visual. And one thing when I look at that track that I would ask um, if I was a professional, I would say, why is the track so long? Why is that track so big? Well, that's the reason why is in this in this picture, you're going to see two colors, different turf. We place the hitting mat five eighths of an inch into the into the slab. And so I have putting turf all over the academy except a 10 by 12 hitting mat. So this camera is going to move obviously horizontally here and I'm going to be able to move my position on that huge hitting mat where I can hit indoors into a net or outdoors. And it's really versatile. I, I love V1 about that. I love these hitting, tra these tracks because I can, you, if everybody looks at it, how much I, how much play I have with those cameras. So the, the student isn't hitting out of the same divot every day. I can also be very dynamic on what I do as a teacher. And uh, I love these big hitting tracks, camera tracks. I think they look really slick in an academy and they're very easy to install. Um, the picture on the right is a pressure mat. I wanna say a few things about that. When you're using your pressure mat in a studio, it is hardwired. Uh, we were able to hide the cable under the floor. So that's cool. There's two cables that come out the floor in a golf studio. Um, in this scenario, it's the pressure mat cable and also the hit detector. If you wanted to, uh, when I should say, Craig wants to take this mat outside, all he does is unplug it put the battery pack on that piece of Velcro right there on the bottom and he's off to the races. Um, so that's the pressure map. Anna, can you scroll? There we go. Okay, this is, uh, I'm so glad you put this picture in here. So um, this is the net and the lighting. Gary, let's talk a little bit about both. So the net is, um, key thing here I would say that I've learned is white is key to make for the best video. Um, people, bodies, clothes, golf clubs show up the best against a white background, obviously. Um, 
Gary, you want to talk about that net? Yeah, sure. So netting, you'll notice too, and I, I think Craig, we talked with um, Brad and some of the other ones, you've got an extremely tall ceiling, taller than normal. So that's why you see a little bit of stitching. Nets come in certain sizes. So we did that together. Originally, you know, we had some guys using black nets. Black nets are fine, but what it does, it really darkens the environment. It also does in certain areas of the country, people wear darker clothes and what they have a tendency to do is blend in with the net. So we try to contrast the golfer as much as possible. So if you look at Craig right now, Craig is wearing a dark jacket, shirt, whatever, but you can see the contrast against the white background. So again, totally up to the customer, totally. We never recommend, um, I did a studio with Mandy once and boy, they really wanted cosmetic and they, they took their walls and they put stone up halfway and it really looked good. But when you put a camera on, it really took away from the golfer. So we, I mean, I hate to say it, simplicity. Left hand, right hand monitors, very important. I mean, don't cheat on the left hand guy. So one comment when we were originally planning and, you know, comes down to money again. Well, gee, do we want to spend the money for a left-handed face on camera that you do see on your left side of the screen here? Or do we want to just wire it? Or the other option is every time I get a lefty, I grab the camera off the right hand and move it over. Now, that's not a good thing to do. Less touch is better too. Trust me, if Craig has other instructors and one day he's fiddling with the depth and the other guy's fiddling with the focus. It's just going to, you know, we want stability and flexibility and accuracy. So once those cameras that we call are tuned, we really don't want the instructor to touch them. And I, and I think we don't forbid it, but the only thing we do is that slide rail, very easy to move. That's a lightweight aluminum rod. And, and it does accommodate if you did have moldings and other things like that. So, you know, this environment is very, very clean. And one thing, I don't know if we have a close-up, but that netting behind the netting, it's a good net. It's uh, called an archery netting. So it's got a tight mesh to it, not tight that you can't see through it, but tight enough where it hits a ball. Cause sometimes if you get a, a cheaper net, you might have to have two nets and they buffer each other. This one has a single net. Notice we've got a little bit of room at the bottom, which cushions the ball and the ball sits. That's by design. It's not like we just ordered too big of a net. And the other part too is that's a net. It is extremely heavy, extremely, it's heavy. How about relatively heavy? Yeah. So there's a track up above that has little trolleys. There's a bunch of grommets that when we ordered the net, we put a grommet in every 12 inches, not every three feet so that the net slides very easily. Two types of trolleys, plastic and metal. You know, with that size of net, we went with metal trolleys. And, you know, plastic would have saved Craig a couple of bucks, but in six months when it didn't open, well, then we'd, then we'd be stuck and he would be calling Mandy and yelling, not Gary. Well, and I also witnessed the four huge burly men that it took to hang that net. Yes. So I'm very glad that we went with the metal. I'm also very glad that those four guys were there to help hang it. And Craig and I didn't have to do that. Craig, you want to talk about that net? Yeah. Also, I want to. I want to. A point that Gary uh, talked about is the cameras. And in another another way, it, it, you know, we talk about not touching it and moving it. Also, think about it as time. You know, you, you're in between lessons. A lefty comes in, and now you're fiddling with this camera on their time. If it takes you three minutes, five minutes to get it set up, focused. So I think it's one of those things. If you're thinking about just doing two cameras and you have the budget for three, I'd get the three. Just of all those reasons. As far as the netting, yes, it's extremely heavy. I, I will tell you this, it moves extremely easy. I've, I've opened it and closed it probably a dozen times so far. I've taught out of this building for, for three full days and um, eight or nine lessons a day. And we were at 24 degrees outside yesterday. You know, I gave three, three um, golf lessons indoors with the quad, with the pressure plate and the video, and it's been holding up great. I think it's gonna be a long longevity on it's gonna be great. I love it. Uh, Anna, is that our last pick? Okay, um, one more pick of the slide track and a close up. We also, um, Gary and I are real particular about how that cable goes into the wall. So we bring those receptacles. We want that to look really nice and finished. And then we of course had to stick the best young teacher uh, graphic. Hey, Mandy, yes. are we I just, I don't know if we're going back to a picture but I just wanted to make a comment on the lighting. 
Yeah, Anna, can you go right back on that? Thank you. That I was yeah. going to go back to that. So notice, notice here too. The lighting is—it's not just randomly placed where the rafters are. I mean, that's the lighting is what we want to do is surround the golfer, not go above the golfer. You know, we do in some installations when you can't get away with it, but the idea is to surround the golfer so you eliminate all lighting. Craig, in, in the lighting is not expensive. So everybody thinks, oh my God, the lights are so expensive. They are not expensive. Uh, I think each one of those fixtures has six bulbs. Each bulb produces somewhere about 5,000 lumens. Believe it or not, six times five is 30, but each fixture produces 20,000 lumens. You know, I, I don't know how that works, but that's the fact. And we try to surround the golfer. And the reason why is that we've invested in really good cameras. They film at 240 frames a second. In addition, they're high definition cameras. So yes, the cameras can work a little bit if you had a darker light environment. In fact, we use these same cameras in simulator environments because they have a low light sensor as well. However, when Craig teaches, we want him to really see the golfer. We want that golfer to see, or we want Craig to see that golf club hit the ball and we want the ball to leave and we wanna see it as a ball and not as a comet trail. That's because we have good lights in good cameras and i'm seeing those things i love the placement that the light is in between the camera and the player i'm seeing a lot less shadowing uh that students really lighting up and popping and then when they see themselves on the on the monitors there as you can see they see a lot of detail there's no blur um it's just it's great feedback we feel very confident in our lighting knowledge it is something that is super critical when you're using high-speed video and uh, please don't make the wrong lighting decisions. So please let Gary and I help you do that. We uh, you can end your screen share, Anna. I just wanna tell a real quick story. We looked at Mr. Short Game's studio yesterday. Um, if you see that webinar, he actually has some bad lighting in his room. But the cool thing about his studio is that he sets the pretty design lighting on its own switch. So when he's working on his golf game, he just cuts the pretty lighting off or the you know, cosmetic lighting, I would say. And then there's no flickering in his videos. We actually showed the example of that last night, um, but it's pretty obvious if you're using high-speed cameras, if you have bad lighting, because it will be very painful and the flickering and the shadows are um, very distracting. Um, can I add one comment? Yes, uh, please. I apologize. I'm just looking at some of the, and I think I can answer some of the chats a little bit, but how many lumens, uh, indoor flight scope, um, there's a question regarding the quad and lighting. So generally in, a, in an environment where you have a combination of a launch monitor technology along with video, video likes light, generally launch monitors don't, but don't, not so much from a capture standpoint, you know, they have a Lux thing that I think uh, FlightScope recommends or Foresight, I'm sorry, but more on if you're, if you ever go to an environment where you're hitting into a what I call a theater setting, a darker environment where the screen is actually the, the launch where you hit into kind of like my background of my uh, thing right here. They have screens like that. They favor a darker environment. So in a lot of environments that we do, we have tons of customers that have both technologies. We put in multiple light switches. So when I use the video, I click them on. If somebody wanted to play in a simulator environment only, we click them off. And, and I think Craig, you have correct me, three or four banks of lights? Four. Four, and, sure. and I don't know, but I'm guessing you have one or two switches to control those. You know, I've got one. Um, I okay. like the lights on. I, I, I haven't seen any issues with the quad, uh, indoors or outdoors. Um, I'm getting some great feedback off of it, meaning I'm not having any missed hits or anything. So I, I, I'm happy with it. Nice. Um, there's a question from Natalie about the wide angle lenses. Um, this is the camera. And Natalie, we, we sell regular lenses, but we also sell a separate wide angle lens. So if you've purchased cameras from V1 and you have less than seven feet, um, seven feet is about the dimension that Gary and I prefer. That's from camera to golfer. Um, then we can talk about a wide angle lens that screws right into your camera um, to answer that question. And, you know, uh, Craig, your room is 20 by 25. Uh, let's talk dimensions a little bit. Um, you've got a real tall ceiling. I think it's what, 30 feet? Is that right? It's tall. Is it Pretty 30? Tall. Yeah. Um, minimum know. height, Gary, 10 feet? 
Uh, yeah, 10 feet, and that's really because you get a six foot guy with a driver, he might have an upright swing. We want to protect that. I mean, that's really the reason. Uh, 10 feet is about the, the, the minimum. Um, and then as far as width of room, I would say 15 feet is the basis. Gary, let me know if you agree. That's again, seven feet from golfer to camera. So if you're accommodating yep. right and left-handed golfers, um, we're gonna ask you for 15 feet. Yeah, Can you talk about depth? Is minimum that I would recommend, although you buy things that some guys, you know, I hate to say it, batting, we work in 12 foot environments. So, um, and it also honestly depends and some of the studios, there's a center strike mat. And if you have a center strike mat, it means you're hitting the ball in the center all the time. So what it really does, it moves the right-handed golfer farther away from the camera. Likewise, conversely, it moves the left-handed golfer farther away rather than in the same position. What that means is that you need to slide your down the line camera back and forth because the down the line view needs to go with left-hand, right-hand golfer. So it's got its trade-offs a little bit um, a lot of people use a center strike mat due to size limitations, but to Mandy's point and to address Natalie, wide angle is good. Yes, it'll accommodate. We could put a camera three feet from the golfer, but I can guarantee you probably don't like the video. It's going to look like looking through a fish uh, eye. An aquarium, fish eye. yeah, a fishbowl, fish eyed effect. So yeah, we can do it, but would we recommend it? Nope, because it's the quality of the video we want to get to. Uh, and Natalie, yes, if you're over on the other side of the pond, our partners at MIA will take good care of you. I'm happy to send you through. If you don't have a contact with them, you can just send me an email and I'll set you up with them. But we definitely want to save on shipping across the pond for sure. Yes, Craig. Yeah, well, I mean, I just wanted to add that we had two bays. You know, the membership really wanted a second bay. They wanted a fitting bay, a, a, a bay where, you know what, if I don't want to take a golf lesson or or use the technology, I can go into the other bay and hit. So this is a two bay facility. There's two 20 by 25 bays. And then, you know, I, I suggest if you're gonna do this, I went center wall insulated all the way from roof to floor, create the privacy, it's quiet. Um, you don't hear the, the strikes on either, either side. You know, we had a we had one of our members, he, he plays on the PGA Tour and he was using the other bay today and I could not hear him and he hits it pretty hard. So I think it allows us, it allows me to have some privacy to teach and also um, for the membership to come in and out. So that's one of the, the things that you want to think about is the disruption in your lessons or if other people are going to use the facility. So when you walk in the door, you can turn straight left right into the other bay. They never come into the teaching bay and it makes it a lot easier for, for all parties involved. Uh, also an important comment, if you are using a hit detector to capture swings, um, our hit detector makes a really slick golf lesson. You can set it to record swings either one at a time or five at a time or keep recording when it hears the golf club move. If that hit detector is standing next to 10 golfers swinging, um, then it gets a little tricky. Yes, Craig. I just saw something pop up on the chat and asked about insulation. Well, it's a foam, it's a um, metal building and we sprayed, have spray foamed it. So we, we put up the, not we, the, the Brad Bays put up the building and then he came in and he ran all the wires. He did all the, the conduit and then he sprayed it and then they sprayed it and painted it. And then they put the sheetrock up and then painted the walls and so forth. So yeah, it's well insulated. Like I said, it was 22, 23, 24 degrees outside the last couple of mornings. And we were in here and I used um, the Samsung, the wall mount air conditioning and heating. And it was great. I mean, I, I, I don't even need this jacket in here. This is just for style. <laughs> Uh, yes, Brad Bates put a very, very slick steel building uh, up there. That is why it is critical that we talk to you about conduit and wires before steel goes up. It's important. You see, yes, if I Gary. The hand or no? Yeah, I just want to address uh, a couple of things that, because this is a recent topic in, in my life. Uh, we do a lot with some some of the bigger chains, you might say, the uh, golf establishments, and you probably know the two of the biggest ones, but so the big question is, gee, with all the wires and all that other stuff, why don't we get rid of the wires? Why don't we go wireless? The problem today is, yes, you could go wireless, but the frame rate of your camera to the computer is going to be very low. The cameras we're using, just plain and simple, will not go wireless. We need a, you know, a pipe this big. It's not literally that big, but it's 
we need the throughput to capture two cameras at once, 240 frames in high def. That, that's a lot of meat and potatoes right there. So yes, we are looking always, always to the future. And yes, I can wirelessly collect my, or, uh, connect my iPad to the computer and use that camera, but I got to turn it down to 30 frames a second. So it's, it's got to do with the, the bandwidth of what we're delivering and the comment in the, it was the regarding the 5G and then V1 with the Pro Studio system, we integrate to the Foresight GC2, GC Quad and the Hawk. And we also integrate the SkyTrack. So those are the technologies. And, and again, we're looking at other ones too, but um, I think we picked some of the best that are available. And, um, and I think we're good to go there. Yeah, I and just on that integration, thank you for answering that, Gary. We're really proud of that. We build a special computer and it's over engineered. That means that you will not call us and fuss at us in five years if it's not big enough for something cool that comes out. Our that supercomputer, as I like to call it, um, can have multiple high speed cameras, it can have a pressure mat, it can have um, the, the foresight or sky track data, and then it's big enough. Um, to grow with you as you add new technology. So um, please let us know if you're thinking about that. And there again, please call us ahead of time so you don't end up buying multiple computers. We're saving money and real estate when we do that. Um, okay, I saw another. Okay, so um, someone asked the budget question about your building. So you have a two bay building. Um, each bay is 20 by 25. Um, Kelly knew that your budget was 100K, but that includes the building. Correct. That's the building and the technology. Now that didn't include the quad, but it did include the building. I mean, from ground up, dirt work, slab, building, insulation, paint, everything, netting, the camera system, V1. So uh, this is a this is a this was a ham sandwich, and we just added a little cheese on top. I mean, <laughs> this was a tight, tight budget. Um, and, and I'm, I'm really happy that, that Mandy was along because we've had a lot of Zoom FaceTime calls. Um, we, we, she is just very, very helpful with the turf. Um, she spoke with Shane Hughes. She spoke with Brad Bates, myself. And um, on a tight budget like this that they really, really did not, we did not want to go over. Um, it, 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 was, it was quite challenging, to be honest. And most people are going to say, how did you do that? It happened. So we got it done. A lot of really good planning. Um, and I would like to talk a little bit about our installation process, just because I'm really sort of proud of it. I learned a lot from Gary, but when we call, when we come and show up to do an installation, I like to be the last person in the room. Gary and I want everything else in um, so that when we leave, uh, we, and we kind of consider ourselves Switzerland. So when we leave, we want all the technology working, talking to each other, and um, the golf professional ready to teach. Um, I've, I've nailed that sometimes and I haven't other times. We nailed it at Denton for sure. I look at Gary giving me a hard time over there. Um, but so I come in, uh, we spent the first day pulling cables and getting everything ready. We spent the second day building the computer and that time lapse, uh, hanging cameras and, and then uh, tweaking them with my team and Craig's preference for how he wants to teach. And then I spent the last day doing training. Um, I think it's really important that you know that before we walk out the door and say, see ya, you're gonna be trained. And I like to think that people can teach when I leave. And Friday, Craig was teaching before I got to the DFW airport. So um, I'm really proud of that. And Craig, can you just talk that, that process? Do you guys feel like when I left, you knew what you were doing? We do. And that's another reason V1, you know, you can connect with the student. The student get, uh, has an app. We have an app. We have this, we have this great system that in one click of a button is going to send the video or voiceover straight to the person's phone, totally integrated Android, iPhone. So, I mean, when she, when Mandy left here, I was giving golf lessons Friday evening. I gave them Saturday and Sunday. And it's just the whole process of, 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 building a relationship with a student. I want this golf academy to feel like a home. You know, when they come in here, it's welcoming, it's clean, it, everything works, um, they get great feedback and they leave with that, with, with my voice in, the, in their pocket, meaning, hey, I know exactly what to do. I know how to do it. I know how to access it. And then communicating and retaining your students, it, it, this is the best way to do it. So yeah, I couldn't be happier. Thank you, Craig. We love that. We love making masters happy. 
Um, that's a good question. How long did the facility take to build from start to finish? It took about three and a half months. Uh, we had a little weather delay. I think we ran into, um, we needed to put a, a little retaining wall, maybe three feet high. We had some sloping issues. So I think once we got the slab poured and we decided on, on, on that, the exact placement of the, of, of the slab, the angle in relationship to the range, then the, then the metal building didn't take very long. You know, it, it kind of started going and then and then we hit a little bit of a wall where we needed to get all the finish work in, all the air conditioning, heating, spraying, and all that needs to be a certain temperature. So we're trying to do this, what I call in the off season. We're trying to do this in November, December, open it in January. So, you know, up here, we're pretty close to Oklahoma. We're pretty far north, um, North Texas. So we're just working around that and, and obviously trying to make the smallest footprint possible, not tear up the whole facility while we do it. So yes, it took, took about that long. How many trees did you cut down? We cut down seven. seven. So, so for everybody, don't jump on me about cutting trees down. Uh, we needed to cut down seven trees. They were out of play on the golf course. They were, they were out of bounds and they didn't come to play on the driving range. So these beautiful trees that are no longer with us, um, they, they served their purpose, but now they're gone. So th thankful for that. <laughs> They, although uh, the property is gorgeous, there are plenty of trees surrounding the academy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's really pretty there. Um, Gary, do you mind? Yes, yeah. what you got? Yeah, no, I'm just going to, I think you're going to go to the question there. Yep. Um, so two, two questions quick, and I'll um, try to answer them if I find. Oh, okay, the system, yeah, the system will, the camera, we use the IDS cameras at 240 frames high def. That camera itself will actually go higher, but what happens is that, I don't know if you see my hands, the picture size actually goes down too. So there's a practical limit, and that limit, um, what we find is 240. So the picture itself is going to be good. And if you look at 240, and, and I'll make Mike Bender as an example, he's a fantastic teacher. Mike is content with 60. I mean, but if you think about it, when it impact, it goes from here to here at 60, at 240 it goes from here to here to here. And that's really the fastest part of the golf swing. So some of the other handheld cameras will go to 960, but the picture is the size of a postage stamp. So 240, you should be comfortable with. The Wait, other Craig's question- Craig's gotta say something. Hang on, Gary, what you got, Craig? You know, speaking of size of picture is I think, think about how big you want your monitors to be, you know, TVs. So you, do you want an 80 inch TV? Do you want a 43? I think some golf academies, you know, you're putting too many TVs up. Uh, we've got two in, in front of us for the right-handed golfer. One was gonna have the quad data. The other one is gonna have the uh, V1 software. And then obviously for the lefty, everybody sees over my shoulder, we have one for the, for the lefty right there in front of me. So think about what size is best for you and your students. You know, I went with a 43 inch monitor. Um, I think in here, it may look a smidge small because of how big the room is and how tall, why the ceilings are, but it directs your focus. You know, you're not looking all over the screen. I mean, think about standing four, four or five feet away from a, a 70 inch or 60 inch monitor. You're like, where do I look? So that's, that's what I wanted to do. I knew if I take a golf lesson in here, that, that's where I want to focus my eyes. So just as an instructor, if you're thinking about that, always think about that TV, uh, TV size. Bigger isn't always better. I Can I um, ask Craig to answer a question for me and part of it to a pan or a, uh, one of the attendees that the turf. So there's a couple of things with turf. You can turf your whole facility and they lay on top of the turf. Another piece of turf is just your hitting mat. And I believe from the pictures that Craig has seemed in a area for the hitting. So can you comment on that, please? I, I didn't want to do that. A couple of reasons why. Number one, I didn't want to turf on top of a turf because when golfers create torque, they create vertical force, they create linear force, the mat starts to move. So I didn't want to have any movement of this mat. So what we did was in the pouring of the slab, we had a five eighths inch depth, um, 12, uh, 10 by 12 uh, spot in the slab place there so I can drop this hitting mat into it. So what, what they did was, yeah, right there, you see the color change. And then the other part is putting turf. 
I noticed that putting turf's a little bit more expensive and on this tight budget, I wanted to go with this because the weave is tighter. You can obviously putt on it, but it also, it, it wears great. I don't, I'm gonna stand in certain areas a lot and I don't want this turf to wear. I want it to last. I used the same exact setup in New Orleans. I used it here. I was adamant about having it. And then that turf from color to color is also going to be seamless. It's, it's dead smooth. So there's not someone stumbling in your golf academy. What's the worst thing? You walk in, hey, my name's Craig Trahan, master professional. The person stubs their toes and falls into the cameras. So we wanted all of this really, really seamless. We wanted to look like golf. We wanted to just have a beautiful color. And I think that's, that's what came, came out. So I love the putting turf. I love the hitting mat. You can tee the ball up right in there. And that hitting mat's gonna, it's gonna wear. It's, it's pretty thick and it's great on your elbows for the student, all things that you wanna think about the golfer's experience. Thank awesome. you, Craig. And, and an important point that he just said, it's seamless, but plugging a tee into it, very important. Yes. Cause some mats you buy, you got to drill from the underneath up which means you're always hitting from the same spot, which means more wear and tear in a very concentrated area. So thank you for sharing that. And that's hey Gary, can you answer that question about the black paint on the top? Uh, the black paint on the top is um, black paint on the top. I don't know the question. Someone so yeah, asked the question. Sorry, I lost my chat. Window. Yep, I did too. Um, uh, well, there's Someone's asking why we have black on the top and then the cosmetic, you know, the, the clean white on the bottom. I think that's just by design of the building. Let me, let me, let me answer that. Uh, number okay. one, the way they wanted the building at Denton Country Club, obviously it's a little taller. So they wanted that that way. That was one of the things from the board. Number two, um, it's really expensive to sheetrock it all the way up. So again, budget. I mean, what I want to finish out, you go in some golf academies and, the, and it's sheetrocked and it's finished up on top. So we needed to say, hey, We've got we've got some extra. We, we need to save some money because I want this V1 system and I want this pressure mat. Where can we do it? So we have we, that's foam up there, and we painted it with the, the just rock paint, and, and it's really matte finish. It's really really durable, and and really it direct your it, your eyes are directed uh, at the golf academy. I don't see anybody coming up and going, hey, you know your your, your ceiling's painted black. It really blends in well, so. I like this. Um, I'm glad we're talking about it. This 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 little conduit right here actually has cables. So this is a really good visual of um, you know how, where how you would wire something. Um, and we consulted on the the width of this conduit, knowing what cables were going to be pulled across the room or not. Um, I think the black is very nice on the eyes. If you have room, of course, a high ceiling, I would definitely consider this. The other thing, since we're talking about it, Gary mentioned it briefly, matte paint and a light colored paint is super, super important. Right. Um, for sure. So going back to that top picture again, I just, I don't know if you can tell, and Craig, correct me if I'm wrong, but the lights are hung with simple chains. They're not even as thick as a um, swing set chains. So they are generally, they're angled a little bit. They're tilted. You may not notice it from the picture versus right down. So they, they are kind of focused in toward the golfer we did we did Th that that picture um brad came back and we have angled those about like that angle and they're facing the golfer so that's how they were hung and then we have adjusted them and even in the back we've adjusted them so it, the lighting's really directed on the golf it really brightens up the student in a i'm very happy to see that that lighting bank is hung so well because um gary mentioned earlier the trolleys and how easy the net slings and um, day two, I slung that net open and almost knocked that lighting bank right off the ceiling. So, so, so the um, lighting moves, moves side to side and obviously <laughs> dust, we can bank it. So it's very versatile. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, and we could still move it and, and do things with it. So a that's a clever on. trick, yeah, folks. If you didn't catch that, right. lighting banks, very cost effective, but how you hang them, how low you hang them and the angle that you hang them is, uh, very important, and uh, we we love talking about that. Gary, you so want just, me to? Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Well, from a comment as to cost, I mean, Craig was saying it's just not just a you know blank checkbook here either. Nobody has a blank checkbook. So part of it is you have an open ceiling. It's just a lot easier to work with. I mean, think about drywalling that. Think about Mandy falling out of a drywalled ceiling. She literally, her feet were hanging out of a drywalled ceiling. <laughs> 
I did everything to push her through, but the drywall was too strong. So I'm kidding, of course, but it's just a lot more work. Once that's in, the lights are all different. So open is good. And how many restaurants you go to that have that nice open kind of a rafters type look. So I think it looks wonderful. And I think the black actually does a lot for it. And, and honestly, it saves a lot of dollars. It's in a lot of restaurants. So you, you'll look up, look, look after your meal and you'll see the duct work for the air conditioning and all those things. So, you know, it's, it's prevalent in a lot of industries. Um, you guys, uh, we didn't do a tour of Denton, but um, the, the academy is, is very close to the golf pro shop. So Craig did not include a restroom in this building because it's like right across the parking lot. Um, so it wasn't necessary here. Um, Craig, great question from Philip. Uh, now that everything is finished and you've, you've used the room, is there anything you would have done differently? It's a great question. Um, as of today, no. I've, I've taught full, full, four full days. The desk in the uh, academy got a little bit mixed up in the blueprints. So yes, we are changing the height of the desk and the position of the desk. So that is the only thing that will be changed that lo got lost in translation. And I rather this desk being mobile, getting lost in translation than something else. So if that was the only hiccup to the whole project that I can think about, um, that will be changed. So I, I want the desk a little higher, count, you know, countertop height. I want to stand behind it. I want to face down range. So that's going to be changed. That's one little nugget um, to point out of the difference between a general contractor and somebody that's, um, that's designing studios for golf professionals. Um, Craig is sitting at a beautiful desk. And I mean, I'm talking to you, the top of that desk is beautiful. However, it is really not suitable for a golf instructor because it's very short. We want the golf instructor to have a counter height desk, obviously. And um, I'm real particular about where the power plugs are. So we hide cables and um, how big that desk is. Cause I know there's a lot of stuff and technology underneath. So um, even the furniture, when I say finishings I'm talking about molding in the room or things like furniture desk. We want the pro to be able to stand up. When does a golf pro ever sit down during a lesson? Yes, Gary. In, in understanding, you would say, well, why did you even go forward? Why did you even go forward with the desk? You know, the reason why is we waited two years on this project. So I, you know, if, if we missed the desk, I'm like, okay, put it in, we'll fix it. So we, let's teach golf out of it. So that was one of those reasons why that kind of just going, okay, we're, we're going to, we're going to get there when we get there with the desk. Not a biggie. What's up, Gary? Just, well, just really good questions. It ties into projectors, launch monitors, etc. cetera. Um, generally, there are, think of silk as a very high material. Think of my t-shirt is very cheap, cotton. The projector projects on that and that really shows the resolution of the image. So in an indoor environment where you also hit outdoors, generally we do not put in where the ball is hit into a screen, which negates the need for a projector. Projectors come in two types, long throw, short throw, but what it really is, they also need to be flicker free. So just as the lights, the camera see more than your eyes see, it picks up these flickering things. So trust me, live and learn. We've had guys go out and buy a projector and boy, pretty soon when they do a video lesson, all you see is red, green, blue. The eyes can't see it, but the camera does. So generally, and this is from Chris, thank you for that question. Um, in an environment like Craig's, no, because you're going to be hitting indoors and outdoors, and that, that mesh screen is very expensive that you'd actually hit into that muffles the ball. So if you had a total indoor environment, then yes. We did, we did wire the Golf Academy for an above, above uh, camera, and there is electric, uh, electricity up there for a projector. We're not going to add one, but we put it in there because it's cheaper to, to put it in the bill than it is to add it so all that is above me in the ceiling so you know there is expansion there awesome um craig i have a question this is the second academy build how did this one how was this different than the first one did we Sorry. lose them i, I, okay. I lost you a little bit 
Go ahead. So my question was, you, this is your second academy that you've built. How was this different than the first one? Well, this one was an indoor, indoor and outdoor facility. The first one was a 6,000 square foot indoor facility where we had a five bay range where the ball flew 30 feet into a white net, just like this one. So we had an indoor driving range. We also had a 1200 square foot putting green. I'm an aim point authorized instructor that was had, if, if anyone knows slope and tilt, had slope and tilt in it where I could teach aim point indoors. We never had to verify it. Also, two technology bays, one launch monitor with a projector and so forth, with a full, both had full camera systems. So the first golf academy had seven places to hit golf balls, two of them being high technology. And we also had a 1,200 square foot putting green where we could do aim point classes and train on this one, obviously two 20 by 25 bays with roll up doors. This is much better because my aim point green is the putting green about 20 feet outside my door. So I can go out to that putting green up to the golf shop and then see that live ball flight when I roll up these massive doors right onto the driving range. So this is the ideal situation. I mean, being at a green grass facility uh, and then an off course facility before it's a different dynamic. Nice, cool, thank you for that. Um, Junior asked a question. So there's three cams and two uh, 50. No, we have a three camera system. So we have down the line and face on righty and face on lefty. Um, Craig hung two TVs on the righty face on wall. Those TVs are 41 inches. Three. One, 43. 43, sorry. Um, one displays his GC2 quad. quad, quad. And then the other one displays the V1 video software. When Gary and I um, consult on a project, we would ask you to source the TVs. Uh, we have a cool, we have a good uh, recommendation for where to source the mounts. And then I would ask you to buy the HDMI cables past that. I do everything else to push the data to those two TVs um, from the two systems. Even the foresight, um, I didn't bring that quad. I didn't sell that quad. Um, we just know from doing this a long time how to make that data work. So that was one of the things that, um, that Craig and I worked on together so that there again, when I leave, all the technology talks to each other and works. Um, so to answer your question, there's actually three TVs on that wall. There's two on the righty face on wall, one on the lefty face on wall. And um, those are just regular old TVs. They're cheap, they're nothing in fancy with uh, HDMI cables that we have the facility source. And then Gary and I do everything else to push the data to them. We have three minutes left. Uh, Gary and Craig, I'm going to ask both of you the same question. Advice for all the good people building a golf academy. What what do we want to tell them? Craig, you want to go first? Craig's frozen, so I'm going to come back to him. Gary, yeah, you want I mean, to go first? Honestly, and Craig, I'll let you go next because you can see your facility, but I honestly believe um, sweat the detail. Don't ignore the detail because that that's really – you know, I equate it to putting drywall on, you know, the mudding is the key, not the paint. So it's, it's the same thing. It's sweat the detail, plan in advance and, you know, plan the unexpected, but, you know, we work with, work with somebody, I guess that's, I, without putting my selling hat on, I really do recommend that. Craig, advice for all the good people building an academy. You know, I'll add, I'll add to that uh, as as any good golf instructor instructor would say, fall in love with the process. Don't 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 fall in love with the end result. And and just just what Gary said, really really work the process and what you're doing. Take every single step with a fine tooth comb. So it's just second nature. It's what we do as golf instructors, and and, and I, I apply that to this building. So awesome. Well, um, Craig, uh, first of all, congratulations on winning or earning your PGA Master. Uh, professional. That's awesome. You did that while we were literally mid planning. Um, congratulations on Golf Digest uh, top teacher under 40. Um, you only have a few more years to keep earning that because I know how old you are. So you better keep, you better work hard. And thank you so much for being a member of our family and for letting Gary and I come into your world and have a little fun along the way while we put that beautiful facility together. I know Gary and I are really proud of it. And we're really proud that we got to work with you. And thank you very much for sharing an hour of your very busy day with us this afternoon. Thank you. We love you so much. Thanks, guys.
Have a good afternoon. Doc Sonny and Gary are on next. Don't miss it. The two legends, 15 minutes from now. Cheers, everyone. Happy summit.